Well, hello and welcome to the tutorial on matrix applications. Our first objective in this first tutorial is to find the area of a triangle given three ordered pairs. So we're looking at a triangle here and I've given it three ordered pairs just generically x1, y1, x2, y2, and x3, y3. Given those three ordered pairs, my formula for the area of a triangle is plus or minus one half as the scalar and then there'll be a three by three determinant. The three by three determinant comes from the numbers in our ordered pairs. I'm going to pick the ordered pairs in order. So along the first row, I'm going to put x1, y1. The second row, I'm going to put x2, y2. The third row, I'm going to put x3, y3. It really does not matter which ordered pair you put where, as long as the x and y coordinates go together. Okay. Now, obviously, we're missing something in our 3x3 three three determinant. We're missing this third column, and our formula simply states to fill that in with 1s. So this is the area for a triangle given three ordered pairs. This is an application of a 3x3 three three determinant. So if we look at our first example, I'm given these three ordered pairs. I'm just going to plug right into our formula here. So area is equal to plus or minus 1 half and let's put our 3 by 3 determinant. I'm just going to choose to put the ordered pairs in order how they're given in the problem. So 5, 6, 12, negative 3, 1, 2. Again, our formula states that we just fill the final column with 1s, and there we go. You might ask yourself, why do we do plus or minus? Well, the plus or minus is in our formula to make sure that our final answer is positive. When we're talking about area in real life, we're talking about a positive value or zero. So sometimes, depending on when you put or where you put the ordered pairs, sometimes your determinant will be a positive value. So we'll just multiply by a positive one half to keep it positive. Or sometimes when you put them a different way, you'll get the exact opposite of that positive value. So it'll be negative we'll have to multiply by a negative one-half to keep that positive. So I don't know if this order is going to yield a positive determinant value or a negative determinant value, so just keep the plus or minus there until the end, and just please understand your answer has to be positive. Okay, so plus or minus a half. This is a 3 by 3 determinant, and we've already evaluated these before. We're going to do expansion by minors. We get to pick whichever row we wish or whichever column we wish. Usually, we like to find one with a 0 in it to save us some time. I don't see a 0, so I'm just going to pick this third column since they're all just 1s. The next thing I do is assign my plus minus pluses. So up in the top left, we start with a plus and then a minus, and then we go plus minus plus okay so again the pluses are going to keep these two ones positive they're going to keep them the same sign the negative is going to force this one as a scalar to become the opposite so our first scalar is going to be a positive one and i'm going to multiply it to its two by two determinant that is found by crossing out the row with that one and the column with that one leaving the 12 the negative 3 the 1 and the 2 so i've got 12 negative 3, 1, and 2. I'm going to move down to the next scalar, which now I know is the opposite of this 1, so that's why it's negative 1, times its little minor. It's 2 by 2. I'm going to block out that row, block out that column. I'm left with 5, 6, 1, and 2. So 5, 6, 1, and 2. And I'm going down this column to my final scalar, which is going to stay the same sign because of the positive. And so that's plus 1 times its little 2 by 2 minor. Block out the row, block out the column. I've got 5, 6, 12, negative 3. 5, 6, 12, negative 3. So there's my initial setup. Now all I need to do is evaluate each of these 2 by 2 determinants, crunch all these numbers together, multiply by a half, and I'll have my area. So I've got my plus or minus a half still here. I don't want to forget about that. Let's see what we get here. I'm going to just do a little fish here. So this is 12 times 2 is 24, minus negative 3 times 1, which is negative 3. Subtracting, now watch out for subtraction, because I'm talking about a whole quantity here. So I'm going to put a parenthesis. 5 times 2 is 10 minus 1 times 6 is 6, plus, I don't really need parentheses here, but why not? 5 times negative 3 is negative 15, 
minus 6 times 12 is 72. Alrighty, we've got some numbers to keep working with here, so plus or minus a half. This turns into 27, minus this turns into 4, plus this turns into negative 87. I'm almost finished, I'm going to come off to the side here, and I've got plus or minus 1 half. Now let's see what we have here. I get to add these numbers in whatever order I want. I'm going to choose to combine the 27 with the negative 87 because my brain sees that that's going to be negative 60. And negative 60 plus negative 4, or subtracting 4, is negative 64. So lo and behold, the way that we put our ordered pairs in originally actually yielded a negative determinant value. That's okay, as long as we understand that we're going to now use this negative in the formula to make sure that the whole thing is positive, the whole area. So area is going to be equal to positive 32. I don't know if we're talking about feet or miles or inches, so I'm just going to put square units, but I want you to understand that this is an area, so of course our units would be squared. That's it. Thank you for watching this first tutorial. Bye-bye.